When Elizabeth found out that her son Alex had passed away, she was devastated. During the funeral, she decided on impulse to say goodbye one last time before the burial. But when she opened the coffin, something shocking and unbelievable happened and changed her life forever. The mourners at the funeral had gathered to say their final goodbyes to Alex, a young man who had been taken from them too soon. In the front row, Alex's mother, Elizabeth, sat looking lost. She felt the loss more deeply than anyone there. No one knew her son as she did. The coffin was slowly being brought closer to the open grave as it was about to be lowered into the waiting earth. A wave of despair washed over Elizabeth. She couldn't bear to see her son put into the ground. The pain was just too overwhelming. Suddenly she jumped from her seat, shocking those around her. She wouldn't allow her son to be buried without one last kiss from his mother. She immediately ran over to the undertakers and pushed them away. She wanted to open the coffin and see her son again. Chaos erupted as mourners and funeral attendants rushed to restrain Elizabeth. They tried to calm her down and stop her from having a mental breakdown, but Elizabeth was relentless. With all her might, the old lady wrenched open the coffin lid. What happened next was shocking, even more than the story behind the reason why they were holding a funeral in the first place. Elizabeth and her son, Alex, had always been close. He was her only son, and she loved him more than anything in the world. Alex was always kind and respectful, and he always helped her out around the house. He was also a bright student, and he had a promising future ahead of him. Alex's father had died when he was young in a car accident. Since that time, Elizabeth had raised him on her own without anyone's assistance. She had worked hard to give him everything he needed, even going the extra mile to make sure he lacked nothing. All his school fees, sports fees, and excursion fees were always paid on time. No one could ever suspect that he was being raised by a single mother. Because of this, Alex was determined to make his mother proud. So he worked extra hard in school to make sure he was always at the top of the class. By the time he was done in high school, he gave his mom his first big surprise, a full scholarship to college. Elizabeth was so proud of her son, but little did she know how things were going to end up. It was in college that Alex met Natalie. They were both studying business, and they had run into each other in class. Alex was immediately smitten with Natalie's beauty. She had long, flowing brown hair, sparkling blue eyes, and a contagious smile. He couldn't help but stare at her, and luckily she was also drawn to him. She liked his intelligence, his sense of humor, and his kind heart. He could always make her laugh, even when she was feeling down. They started dating within a month, and soon the two quickly became inseparable. Alex was particularly drawn to Natalie's intelligence. She was sharp and witty, and she could always challenge him intellectually. They loved having deep conversations about everything, from business to engineering to philosophy. Everyone who saw them knew that Alec and Natalie were happy together and were sure they were going to get married one day. In their last year in college, Alex introduced Natalie to his mother. Elizabeth was happy that her son had finally found someone. She had been worried that he would never settle down because he was so focused on his studies. But after meeting Natalie, Elizabeth was relieved. The young woman was everything she could ever desire for her son. The two quickly became close, and Alex was so happy to see his mother and his girlfriend getting along so well. He knew that he was lucky to have both of them in his life. He finally told his mother that he and Natalie wanted to start a business together. Elizabeth was supportive of her son and was willing to help him do anything to get started. However, things started to change when Matt came into the picture. Matt was a brilliant programmer, and he quickly became friends with Alex and Natalie. As soon as he found out about their business idea, he tried to convince them to let him join in. Matt had always dreamed of starting his own company, but he didn't have the business knowledge or the resources to do it on his own. That was why he was so drawn to Alex and Natalie's business idea. 
He knew that they were the perfect partners to help him achieve his dreams and quickly convinced Alex and Natalie that he was the missing piece of their puzzle. He told them that he could help them build a successful company and make them all rich. Alex was hesitant at first. Even though they were good friends, he didn't know if Matt would make a good business partner, but Natalie pressed him to agree. In all fairness, Alex was impressed with Matt's technical skills and his knowledge of the technology industry. He also trusted him because he was their friend, so he eventually agreed to a partnership. Matt quickly became an essential part of the team. He was responsible for developing the company's software, and he was very good at it. Their product was in high demand and soon became a huge success. Alex, Natalie, and Matt were all making a lot of money. But then things started to go wrong. Matt was very ambitious and manipulative and soon started to cause problems. He started to make changes to the company structures without consulting Alex and Natalie and also began to take credit for their work. He made risky decisions for the company without informing Alex and even worse, he started to flirt with Natalie. This new behavior made Alex very uncomfortable. He tried to talk to Matt about his attitude but he just brushed him off. He told him that he was only trying to help the company succeed. As for Natalie, he told Alex that he was just being paranoid. But Alex didn't believe him. He knew that Matt had something up his sleeve and he was worried about what he was planning. He now began to wish he had never agreed to let him join the company. Soon, Matt began to argue with Alex constantly about the direction of the company. Matt wanted to sell a lower quality version of their product for more income, but Alex didn't agree. The arguments escalated, and soon the friends and business partners started to drift apart. What hurt Alex most was when he noticed that Natalie was becoming too close to Matt. He had always trusted her, but now he wasn't so sure about her true feelings. When he confronted her, though, she denied that anything was going on between her and Matt. Yet, Alex didn't believe her. He could tell that she was hiding something. Alex was furious. He felt betrayed by both his friend and his girlfriend. He didn't know who to trust, and he was starting to feel like he was being pushed out of his own company. He was also worried about Natalie and didn't know what to do. That was when tragedy struck. Alex was walking home from work late one night when he was attacked by a group of thugs. They tried to rob him, but they found nothing on him. This made the thugs very angry, and they attacked him. Fortunately, a passerby found Alex unconscious the next morning and called 911. Alex was rushed to the hospital where he was treated for his injuries. When Elizabeth found out what had happened to her son, she was devastated. She stopped all she was doing and rushed to the hospital to be by her son's side. Alex was in critical condition, but he survived the attack. Still, he had to spend several weeks in the hospital to recover from his injuries. When Alex was finally discharged from the hospital, he returned home to live with his mother. Elizabeth was heartbroken to see her son so injured and traumatized. She did everything she could to help him recover, but it was a slow process. Alex was physically recovering, but he was struggling emotionally. He was withdrawn and depressed. He didn't want to go out or see anyone, not even his girlfriend, Natalie. He chose to spend all of his time alone in his room. Elizabeth tried to talk to Alex about what had happened, but he refused to open. He didn't want to remember the attack. He just wanted to forget about it and move on. But it wasn't that easy. That night had left a deep scar on Alex's soul. He was no longer the same person he had been before. Alex started to push people away, including his mother. He didn't want to be around anyone and just wanted to be left alone. Elizabeth was worried about her son. She tried to get him professional help, but he refused to go. Even when she tried to talk to Alex about what he was going through, he refused to open up. Elizabeth was heartbroken to see her son in so much pain. She didn't know what to do to help him. She felt helpless and alone. The thug's attack didn't just affect Alex's mental health. 
it made him increasingly paranoid and distrustful of others. This paranoia began to affect his startup and his relationship with Natalie and Matt. He stopped meeting with investors and working on new products and moved into a different apartment all by himself. Elizabeth tried to stay in touch with Alex, but he was often unresponsive. He would either ignore her calls or hang up on her. This made his mother very concerned, so one day she decided to go to his apartment to check on him. When she arrived, she found the door unlocked. She entered the apartment and called out Alex's name, but there was no answer. She called Natalie and Matt to ask about him. They didn't know where he was either. Elizabeth immediately knew something was deeply wrong, so she reported Alex as a missing person to the police. The police investigated, but they couldn't find any clues about where he had gone. This made Elizabeth even more worried. Then the saddest day of her life came around. A few days later, the old lady received a phone call from a hospital. They told her the shocking news. Alex had been found dead. Elizabeth was completely devastated. She rushed to the hospital to see her son's body and was heartbroken when she saw him lying there, pale and lifeless. She couldn't believe that he was really gone. The hospital told Elizabeth that Alex had slumped and fallen on the street. When he was attended to by Good Samaritans, he already wasn't breathing and had no pulse. By the time he got to the hospital, he was pronounced dead on arrival. They had checked his phone, found her contact, and given her a call. Elizabeth blamed herself for not being there for her son. She felt that she had failed him as a mother. As far as she was concerned, her world had ended. She didn't want to do anything but stay in bed all day and cry. She couldn't imagine her life without Alex. Her family and friends tried to support her during this difficult time, but she felt like no one could understand her pain. She felt alone and lost. Her son, whom she had cherished from his birth, had now been taken away from her. Elizabeth began the funeral arrangements in a state of shock, but then Natalie and Matt came forward to tell her they were going to take this burden from her. They would plan everything from the service to the burial and only told her to go choose a suit from his closet. The ceremony was held the next day. The church was packed with people who loved and cared about Alex. Elizabeth sat in the front row, listening to the minister's eulogy. The minister celebrated Alex's accomplishments, his kind heart, and the bright future he'd been robbed of. But as the minister's words washed over the assembled mourners, Elizabeth's mind wandered. She was still grappling with the shock and despair of her son's sudden death amidst the sea of condolences and well wishes. A nagging suspicion clotted her. It was a strange, unsettling feeling that refused to be silenced. She couldn't shake the notion that her beloved son, Alex, might not be as gone as they all believed. As the coffin was being lowered into the ground, Elizabeth could no longer take it. She jumped to her feet and rushed to the grave. She finally managed to open the coffin lid, and everyone gasped in horror. Inside the coffin, Alex was lying there, pale and lifeless. But then, a flicker of movement caught Elizabeth's eye. Alex's chest was rising and falling slightly. He was alive. Elizabeth screamed for help, and the mourners rushed to the grave. They helped her lift Alex out of the coffin and lay him on the ground. He was still unconscious, but he was breathing. The paramedics arrived a few minutes later and rushed Elizabeth followed in the ambulance, rang that her son would be okay. At the hospital, Alex was placed in the intensive care unit. He was still in critical condition, but the doctors were hopeful that he would make a full recovery. Elizabeth stayed by his side all night. She was so relieved that he was alive but she was also worried about him. She didn't know why he had been buried, alive, but she was determined to find out. As Elizabeth sat by her son's bedside, she couldn't help but notice the absence of Natalie and Matt. Alex's girlfriend and business partner hadn't been at the funeral either, despite having volunteered to plan all of it. She knew that Natalie and Matt had been close to Alex. They had all lived in the same neighborhood and were business partners. So why weren't they here now? 
when Alex needed them most? Elizabeth couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. She suspected that Natalie and Matt knew more about Alex's disappearance than they were letting on. When Alex eventually woke up, his mother was overjoyed, but her happiness turned to rage when he told her about what happened the day when he had been found apparently dead on the roadside. Natalie and Matt had invited him to their shared office that day to talk about the future of their growing company. They felt that Alec was dragging it down with his erratic behavior and wanted him to sell all of his shares to them. They had gotten into a fight and Alex had threatened to pull out with his ideas. They told him to go ahead and that they didn't need him. Only when he had left the office and felt the first palpitations and he realized that the tea they had offered him didn't taste like usual. But by then, it was too late to do anything and he had collapsed in the street. The police began their investigation and discovered that months earlier, Natalie and Matt had been approached by an investor who wanted to buy the company for a large sum of money. But there was a problem. Alex owned the rights to most of the company's ideas. Since Alex would never agree to the sale, Natalie and Matt had to remove him from the picture. The two of them who had been secretly dating behind Alex's back devised a sinister plan. First, they hired thugs to beat him up. This was to keep Alex in the hospital while they made changes to the company. But when Alex recovered and became suspicious them, they decided to go further. Their final plan was to drag Alex and remove him from the picture. The in the tea they served him in the office caused his heart rate to slow dramatically, and he fainted on the streets. He was rushed to the hospital where he was wrongly pronounced dead. However, Natalie and Matt were unaware that the drug had only made Alex unconscious. They had taken over all the preparations the funeral, stopping the medical examiner from performing an autopsy on legal grounds, and then quickly leaving to close the deal with the investors. Alex was nearly buried alive because of them, but his mother's intervention saved him. Elizabeth was shocked and horrified by what had happened. She couldn't believe that Natalie and Matt would do something so evil. Armed with this new information, the police arrested Natalie and Matt at the airport. They had heard that Alex had survived and were attempting to flee the country. They were charged with attempted murder, convicted, and sentenced to life in prison. Alex still couldn't believe that his girlfriend had conspired to take his life and his company. Elizabeth was relieved that Natalie and Matt had been brought to justice. However, she was still struggling to cope with what had happened. She couldn't believe that her son had not only been beaten up on purpose, but also nearly been buried alive. Still, Elizabeth helped her son recover from his physical and emotional injuries. She was grateful to have him back, and they became closer than ever before. And when Alex became a millionaire, thanks to his groundbreaking ideas, he proudly declared that he owed it all to his mother. What a roller coaster. Do you know of any similar situation where doctors made a wrong diagnosis that could have led to something grave? Now, would you have reacted to knowing about Matt and Natalie's betrayal? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section.